What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to call one Lambda function from another Lambda function. Remember previously I had a couple of videos where I talked about how to use SQS or Kinesis to fan out your request, just so that you can have multiple processes running at the same time in parallel. So those architectures are obviously very helpful for a lot of applications. But then there are also scenarios where you just want to have one Lambda function to trigger it just one instance of another Lambda function. A couple of examples that I can think of is, let's say that you have a process and one part of the process is better to write it in Python. And then the other part of the process is way better to write it in Node.js because different languages sometimes are specialized in doing certain things. Uh, so this way you can write part one of your process in Python and then part two of your process in Node.js in separate Lambdas. So after lambda number one finished the code in Python, you can just use that to trigger lambda number two that's written in Node.js to finish the process. And then example number two I can think of is execution time. Because lambda function, the maximum execution time is only 15 minutes. And imagine right now you have a process that may take 20 minutes to finish. So this way you may have to split up the entire process into two parts. And then one part is written in one lambda and then the other part is written in another lambda and each of them may take 10 minutes to finish. So in this scenario, you will want to just have one lambda function to trigger another lambda function, only one instance. And obviously there are other situations you may want to use architectures like this. So this is certainly a good thing to know. And now I'm going to show you how to do it. So without further ado, let's get to it. Okay, so right now I am on the homepage of the AWS console. And step number one is to create an IAM row for the Lambda functions to use, just so that they can access each other. So I'm going to go to IAM, rows, create row. And then underneath here, we're going to choose Lambda because the Lambda function is going to use it. Hit next. And then we're going to attach two policies to it. The first one is the CloudWatch log because we want to be able to see the logs just for debugging purposes. And then the second one is Lambda. Um, for simplicity, I'm just going to give it full access, but you can refine it further for security purposes in your production. And then hit next, give it a name, Lambda, check a Lambda row maybe. Create. Okay, so it's created successfully. So we're done with this part, and now we're going to create the two length of functions that we can use for the demo. So I'm going to go to the Lambda page. Give it a name. I'm just going to call it Lambda number one. And we're going to use Python for this demo. And then for the row, we're going to choose the one that we just created, which is that. Hit create. Before we do anything, I want to change the config a little bit. Uh, just to increase the, exit, the, the time limit, the timeout limit to one minute. That should be sufficient. And now we're going to create lambda number two. Do the same thing. Okay, so the two lender functions are created successfully. And right now, let's go to the console to, to write the code. So the first one that we're going to write is lender number one. So go back here and click on code. First thing first, let's do some import first. Other than JSON, we're going to need to use Bodo3. And then we're going to define a lender client, which is pretty standard, just like that. And then inside our Lambda function, we can define a input uh, for the request. So in here, we can specify anything we want. Um, so in this example, let's simulate the communication between two agents. So let's say that agent is going to have a agent number. Uh, let's just call it one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to have a message that we want to deliver to the, the other agent. Let's just say a secret message from lambda number one, and then over, something like that. 
And now let's invoke lambda number two and pass the message over. Invoke. And then the function that we want to invoke, uh, it needs to be a complete arn of the lambda function number two. So copy the arn here, paste it. And then we can also specify a invocation type. So this one is not required, and there are different types of invo invocation types that you, that you can specify. Um, and since in our example, we want to get a message back from the other agent, um, so the type that we're going to choose is request, response. But if you don't care about the response from the other agent, you just want to fire and forget, uh, you don't have to specify this. And then the payload, that we're going to pass on to the next agent is yeah so a payload is like a request body uh, in api calls and we're going to pass into our input message and then after we get a response back we can extract the response body or we can extract the payload the entire payload so we just call it response payload equal to response payload let's just load it uh, into JSON format just so that it's formatted nicely and then we're just gonna print out uh, what the other agent says and in return uh, maybe we just say success um, but you can return any other things if you want to so that's it for lambda number one let's deploy it and then let's move on to lambda number two this one is also pretty simple. So we first we got the event object here uh, that was passed in from lambda number one. So we can extract it. So agent number, we're going to extract the agent number first. So let's copy this. And then the message from the agent is just message. And then we can print out something like agent agent number says what do they say let's print out a message maybe we're gonna name it calling agent number uh, just to be more specific so we're gonna print out agent one two three four five says whatever the message is gonna come in and then in your normal application this is where you would do your business logic yeah, whether to save it into S3 or call in other APIs or other things. Um, but for this demo, we're just going to print out whatever the agent says. And then we can construct a response and then send back to agent number one. So response body. I'm also going to send back my agent number back to the uh, caller just so that they know who I am. And then a message. We can say that uh, lambda to receive secret message successfully, something like that, over. And then we can just return the response, something like that. Hit deploy to save it. And now we are ready to test everything out. So go back to lambda number one, click test, test it band. We don't need anything here. It's safe. Test. Okay, um, everything seems to be successful. Um, and yeah, I spelled it wrong, success. So now let's go to the log and see if there's anything wrong. Hopefully not. Okay, so this is the message that we got back from lambda number two that says, um, their agent number and then the message says lambda number two received uh, secret message successfully uh, i have a typo here too and over and then now let's go back to lambda number two to see if it actually got the message correctly and yes it's able to extract the agent id um, and the secret message that was sent over from uh, lambda number one uh, that says agent one two three four five says a secret message from lambda number one over and that's exactly the message that we sent over 
So it seems like everything's working. Uh, this is a simple tutorial, uh, but it can be very helpful in some use cases. So I hope you learned something today, and if you liked the video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next video.